in the chapter 10 work file you end up having a composition that extends to the bottom of the page um, in a way that um, isn't exactly what you want to see. Um, and so I'm going to ungroup my group that I have here with command shift G and then I should be able to click on this white shape that I used just to sort of mask out the part I didn't want to see and hit the delete key and with the delete key pressed you can see this is what I'm talking about so um, in this composition uh, I kind of wanted the hand to be there and then I wanted this red frame to kind of act as a border and then I just didn't want to see this little extra part of the hand um, in Photoshop you would apply a layer mask and uh, since I'm an illustrator I will instead either draw a big white shape as we do in this chapter which is um, kind of cheating I mean it's not really cheating but it's not the best way to do things um, or create a clipping mask a clipping mask was a little bit outside the scope of the chapter um, nonetheless I can demonstrate it here and uh, for those who are ready to go ahead and learn that um, this would be a nice opportunity to learn something a little extra. So a clipping mask works in Illustrator um, in a pretty easy way. Basically you just make a shape, uh, a path that is a closed shape uh, and that shape is essentially the part that you will keep or that you will see and everything that's not included in that shape will be um, invisible when you apply your clipping mask. So um, in this case what I would do is take a look in my layers and I'm gonna go ahead and find my hand so my hand is actually part of my collage so I'm just sort of hide and show I can hide and show this whole layer and I can see that on the whole layer the hand is is there um, I could hide some of these other layers just to make things a little easier to see um, but maybe I'll leave the frame there just so I can see what I'm dealing with. I actually don't need to clip um, the hand. It's, I mean, the hand actually is sort of clipped already. I did that in Photoshop. Um, but my clipping mask can be a very easy shape. I just need it to basically not include this little tiny bit of the hand image. So I'm going to press Command-R on my keypad to open my rulers. And from my ruler, I'm just going to drag down a rule and this is where I kind of need to go, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit higher than that just so that if I'm off by a little bit, um, I know I'm safe, basically. And now I can hide the frame. And on my collage layer, I'm just going to draw a really fast shape, something really easy and obvious. Um, and I could actually, I don't even really need to use my pen, I could actually just use a, a rectangle. Why don't I do that? Because that's even simpler. Um, and I could basically say, I want everything inside that box to show. Um, and I want everything beneath it to be hidden. Now, one thing that I've a little bit forgotten here is that my image includes more than my hand. It actually includes this whole collage. So I'm going to extend my box all the way up like this. And now I'll go ahead and say my path is selected. And if I hold the shift key, I could also select my collage. I have to select both pieces, the path and the image, in this case the collage that I want to clip. With both pieces selected, I can now go to the object menu, clipping mask, make. And you can see the hotkey for that is command 7 on a Mac. On the PC it would be control 7. And that's it. If I click off of this, you can see I've hidden anything under the line, and everything that was in that box above the line is now being shown. In my Layers panel, I can see that I actually have a clipping mask. It says Clip, and you can actually, let me expand this so you can see what it, what it says. So Clipping Path is there, um, and Chapter 8, Chapter 8 No Ant image is what's being clipped with that clipping path. I could always select all of that. Notice when I just click on it, all three of those are selected. I could always go to Object Clipping Mask and Release, um, and that will allow me to um, click on that path and delete it if I want to. I'm going to Command-Z that to keep it there. And now with it there, I actually don't need that white 
piece underneath because my image is clipped uh, the way that I wanted it to be clipped. Um, it's actually, you know, extending a little bit further down, but since my red shape covers that area, that's totally fine. So uh, clipping masks, really not too difficult to create, and certainly you can make and release them, so you really can't go wrong. Um, I just didn't really have word count to deal with it in the chapter, um, but it's, um, it's a much more effective way of working, and it's also, um, you know, going to produce the results when you're printing that you'd like to see. Okay, imagine that you did not do a clipping mask and, or a clipping path, and instead you drew a white rectangle. Um, one thing that is mentioned in the chapter is being very careful so as not to um, uh, eliminate part of what you're trying to hide. So in other words, and it's kind of hard to articulate this, but you'll know it when it happens to you. Let's say you mean to hide this bottom portion of the hand, but you accidentally don't extend this box all the way across. Like you think you did, but you, you really didn't. Um, this happens all of the time, and it's the kind of thing that you don't plan. You, you don't mean for it to happen, and you don't plan for it to happen, but it's an easy accident to make. So here would be a case where um, I end up with kind of a little bit of a bump right there, where I didn't take my my rectangle that was supposed to hide things and go all the way with it. Um, and that's just something to watch out for. And that actually is something that you you know want to watch out for both if you're making a clipping path or if you're just making a rectangle to hide uh, part of your image.